When brands like Hyundai, Kia, or even Apple launch the same product over and over again with minor tweaks like new colors, what do we call it? A facelift. And this Photoshop update is a facelift at best. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we get started with the new features, just so that we are on the same page, I'm on Photoshop version 25.11.0. You can easily update it through your Creative Cloud desktop app. And if you're using your Captain Jack Sparrow version, you know how to get it. The first new update is a brand new tool called the Selection Brush. You'll find it inside of the Lasso group. There it is. And all it does is make a selection with a brush. So if you were to select the Lasso tool, for example, and made a selection like this and filled it with a color. Let's say with black color as the foreground color, we pressed Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill it. This is how it fills it, opaque. On the other hand, let's press Ctrl or Command D first. If we select the Selection Brush tool and if we set the opacity to 100 right here at the top, on the options bar. Option bar gives you the options for the tool that is selected, remember? So now if you do something like this, this is a selection. You don't see the marching ants, but you can fill it as well. So with the foreground color again, black, if you press Alt, Backspace or Option, Delete, there you go, it is filled. Right now you're seeing it like this because there's an overlay. But if you select any other tool, there you go. There is a selection that is filled. Control or Command D to deselect. Now what's special about this tool? This tool allows you to make transparent selections very, very easily. So if you were to select the Selection Brush tool, and let's say we set the opacity to 50% and we painted, and we painted a little more right here. And then if we filled it with foreground color black, like this, if you select any other tool, there is a selection and it is filled in a transparent manner. But why is this important? This has applications throughout Photoshop, but the biggest application is with Generative Fill. So if we were to make a regular selection with the Lasso tool like this, and if we were to type something like Dragon inside of Generative Fill, let's type in Dragon and click on Generate. As you can clearly see, the Dragon is on its own. Here's the first, second, and third. They are on top of the wall. But if you want to take a reference off the wall, you need to make a transparent selection. So here's how to do it. So let's Turn it off for now and instead select the Selection Brush tool. And in here, I'm going to set the opacity to 50% and then just paint this same area like so. By the way, if you loop around it, it will fill the whole thing. For example, you don't have to fill like this, just loop around it and it automatically fills the whole thing. Now, since this is also a selection, Generator Fill button is activated. By the way, if you're not seeing the contextual taskbar, you want to go to Window and here, make sure contextual taskbar is checked. Click on Generator Fill right here and again, type in Dragon and click on Generate. And as you can see, this time it takes a reference from the wall. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. It is like it is engraved on the wall. It lacks details and that is why not everything can be done with AI. At least the feeling of accomplishment of creating something by hand. Another example could be turning the sky into watercolor. Keep in mind, I'm painting with only 30% opacity. You can barely see it. Now we have a selection. This is only 30%. Click on Generate a Fill and type in watercolor. Let's see what it does. If it was just a regular selection, it wouldn't take the guy into consideration. But with only 30% opacity for the selection, this is now watercolor. Not perfect, but this is how it works. The face is something else, but you get the point of how it works. Now you might be asking, isn't the selection brush tool same as the quick mask mode when we work on a brush and have the quick mask mode activated? Well, yeah, that is the definition of a facelift. The second feature was featured in the beta version of Photoshop and it's now in the regular version of Photoshop. And it's much needed, by the way. If you click on generate a fill and let us create a suit, let's make her wear a suit in the middle of a garden where she should be jogging. Now the thing with generate a fill is that it has a limited resolution. And as you zoom in, you will notice that the resolution is limited. If you want to enhance this, you can simply click on Enhance Detail button right here. As you hover over the generations, you'll see this new button. Let's click on it. It tries to enhance the existing details without creating any new details. So it will be better than before. Have a look at it. So here's the before and here is the after. And that, my friend, is enhanced details for you. If something is generated bad, it's going to remain bad, but sharper. So again, here's a button, wonderful button, right? So here's the before, here's the after. That's all. Oh, have a look at that button. Uh, maybe from Balenciaga. Are we dreaming? Calculator on the iPad and bullets and numbering in Photoshop? This is the 21st century. So yes, you can now have bullets and numberings in Photoshop. If we were to type something, Pix imperfect right here. And then we were to type in something like Photoshop. Let's select both of those. If you go to the paragraph menu right here, you can have bullets and numbering right here. So these are the bullets and there you have the numbering. It looks weird, but it's available. You know why this is happening? My stupid fault actually. 
let's select all of it. I have set all of them to subscript right here. Let's uncheck that and there you go. It should be fine. Now this new feature is not new, but it has moved. So here we have a simple composite, background, text and subject. Now watch this. If you go to file, automate and go to generator plugins by the way it's grayed out there seems to be a bug in the regular version of photoshop i'm going to share with you how it works anyway in the beta version of photoshop maybe the bug is not there with you so let's go to file automate generator plugins inside of that check image assets earlier it was inside of file generator i think it has just been moved generator plugins and check image assets that's all once you do have a look at what happens so here's the subject right if i rename it to subject dot png seems like nothing happened but if you open that folder of that psd right here there is a new folder created next to the psd if you open that there you have your subject dot png so you have individual there saved at whatever extension you give it if i rename this concert to concert dot png let's go back to that folder and here we have our concert png you can also do jpeg nobody's stopping you let's unlock the background layer and let's just name it layer zero jpeg and if you open that folder there you have your layer zero jpeg now this feature has been there in the beta version of photoshop but now it is in the main version of photoshop one of my favorite new updates and that is the adjustment brush saves you a lot of time so you'll find the new adjustment brush right here let us select that and let's say you want to add a curves adjustment layer so simply you want to make sure that curves is selected at the top or in the contextual taskbar and just paint like so and let's say i want to darken that area done and if you wanted to add a new adjustment layer all you need to do is to select add new adjustment and right in here let's say hue saturation and let's paint maybe this area now by default it is just saturating that a little bit so let's reset that and maybe let's go to the reds and just decrease the lightness now we have a black tank wonderful image so fast the contextual taskbar now has better controls when it comes to shapes and transformations so if we select the rectangle tool right here and made a rectangle like this we can change the fill and the stroke on the fly so let us change the fill to red and stroke to something else let's keep it black you can change the thickness of that you can change the roundness of it maybe 20 pixels and there it is a little bit round also for transformations let's say you were moving products it's not what you think let's move this product right here and you can rotate it 90 degrees clockwise and anti-clockwise directly from the contextual taskbar you can even flip it by clicking on this button or flip it horizontally or vertically with all of these buttons just makes it easier now this feature was also already available in the beta version of photoshop now in the main version of photoshop and that is generating an entire image a new dialog box shows up for it and it's just fantastic so if you have a blank document open you can click on generate image in the contextual taskbar or you can also click on this button right here generate image or you can also go to edit inside of that generate image all of them do the same thing and once you do a brand new dialog box is going to show up and here you have the option to create art photo give a reference image so i'm just going to type in something magenta sunset over mountains made of ice cream why not and i want it to be a photo and then in the effects section you can give so many darn effects let's keep baroque right here and we're going to leave reference image as is and click on generate you really can take the time to experiment with it a lot and there you have it in baroque style mountains should have been made of ice cream but uh, this is what we get by the way do keep in mind generate images using firefly model 3 maybe it was not trained on enough ice creams last but not the least if you do use the adjustments panel there is a positioning change so if you go to window and then adjustments right here which i rarely use now single adjustments have made its way to the top earlier you had presets first and then maybe single adjustments but right now the position has moved because this is what we use the most so that's all the facelifted new updates in photoshop and overall i'm pretty much impressed with these new refinements but what do you think what are your thoughts on these new features and which one did you like the best let us talk about it in the comments thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating